The St. John Valley Senior College offers non-credit classes during a fall term, which runs from September through December, and in the spring term, which runs from March through June. The classes are offered to people who are 50 years of age or older. Membership to Senior College is $15 per term and permits the member to take any of the courses offered that term. The classes have no homework, no tests, but lots of fun. The courses range from academic subjects to personal enrichment topics. Some classes are field trips to different tour sites of the state. One such tour was an overnight tour of the town of Greenville, Maine. The town is located on the shores of Maine's most famous Moosehead Lake. The purpose of the trip was to hear about the historical development of the town, understand its economic base, visit tourist sites, and enjoy the fine local cuisine. The town of Greenville is divided into two areas by the shape of the lake. The East Coast section of town has much of the tourist attractions. It is a small area and is easily covered by walking. Our tour would start in the East Coast section. The tour would include a three-hour ride on Moosehead Lake's famous boat, the Katahdin. The boat was once used to tow large rafts of logs, called booms, from one end of the lake to the other. Now the Katahdin brings tourists across the lake. The boat would take our group 40 miles across the lake to Mount Kineo. This mountain is one of the few spots in Maine where the Native Americans were able to find flint to make arrowheads and tools. The Katahdin's return trip would bring us back to the East Cove dock. Here, we would spend a few minutes getting back our sea legs and browsing the many local shops. In the evening, the tour would take the group along the eastern shore of Moosehead Lake to enjoy the spectacular view and sunset at the top of Blair Hill. From the East Cove, we would travel to the West Cove section of the town of Greenville. Here we go past the school district, the Masonic Lodge, the area's health facilities, the post office, the churches, and finally arriving at the West Cove area. Here we find more commercial businesses, such as seaplane flying services public boat launch facility, convenience stores, and motels. As you can see, the town of Greenville has two sections. Both are united together by this majestic Moosehead Lake. The Greenville tour was organized by Don Murray. Don was born and raised in Greenville and was a great guide on the tour. Fifteen senior college members registered for the tour. The tour specifically wanted to highlight the following tour sites. The first was the Everlast Craft Sheridan Historical House. The house belonged to one of Greenville's most prominent families and was given to the Greenville Historical Society. The Moosehead Marine Museum provides a wealth of information on Greenville's lumbering history. Our guide, Don Murray, graduated from Greenville High School. The school boasts of its academic excellence, but especially its winning sports teams. 
Don was once a member of Greenville's famous basketball team. Greenville High School is the home of the Lakers. You would expect the offerings on the menu of the Rod and Reel Cafe to be fresh fish and delicious seafood. You will not be disappointed. The Moosehead History Exhibit provides a good history of the early settlement of the town, including a history of Native Americans that lived in the area. The Indian Store offers the tourists an opportunity to purchase local treasures from crafts to camping equipment. The Shaw House is operated by food caterers and provide delicious meals for private parties. The tour highlighted the history of the Bangor and Rustic Railroad, which caused the economic expansion of Greenville's logging industry. One of the mercantile centerpieces of Greenville is Breton's Store. This continues to provide the bare essentials for the town's residents. The Moosehead Traders offers the shoppers with local crafts, rustic furniture, and a great line of souvenirs. The town has two major seaplane bases, where planes continually fly over the wooded hills looking for forest fires. The planes also are used to provide tourists with scenic tours over the majestic Moosehead Lake. The town of Greenville also provides excellent boat launching facilities at their Junction Wharf. Fishermen can also try their skills at fishing right off the wharf. In the center of town is Thoreau's Park. This area provides not only resting areas for the tourists, but also a magnificent view of the East Cove of Moosehead Lake. Another boat mooring facility is adjacent to Moosehead Lake Marine Museum. The area also provides a spectacular view of Moosehead Lake. Our guides for the tour were Don and Reggie Murray. Don, a native of Greenville, had once worked on the log drives and was very familiar with the town. Our first tour stop was at the Moosehead Marine Museum. Not only does the museum offer the history of the logging industry in the Greenville area, but it is also the place that sells tickets for the boat ride on the Katahdin. Our day's itinerary included a three-hour boat ride aboard the 110-foot Katahdin. Just prior to boarding the Katahdin, the group began to organize for a photo. In the background is the East Cove of Moosehead Lake. One of the Valley's traditions is to take a photo with a copy of the St. John Valley Times at different locations throughout the world. The photo is then submitted to the newspaper and marketed under the tagline, Who Reads the Times? At 12.30, the group began to board the Katahdin for our three-hour tour on Moosehead Lake. The tour offered beautiful scenery along Moosehead Lake. The rolling hills surround the entire lake. Some of the hills turn into mountains. At one point, we could see Mount Katahdin, 35 air miles away. We could also see some of the recreational opportunities, such as sailing on this 40-mile-wide lake. 
There are many islands along the shore of Moosehead Lake. Some, like the one that we see here, are quite large. Some islands are quite small. Some of the islands are inhabited, as we see by this camp on one of the islands. In some parts of the lake, the hills show signs of human civilization, such as homes, windmills, and cell phone towers. Most of the larger lakes in Maine provide homes for waterfowl. Here we see loons swimming on Moosehead Lake. Other waterfowl, such as the mallard duck, prefers living closer to shore. Aboard the Katahdin, our group enjoyed the spectacular scenery that nature has to offer. The boat ride also provided the time to enjoy each other's company. The three-hour tour provided time to discuss and solve the world's problems. The tour also offered time to tell stories. But the tour especially created and renewed friendship and long-lasting common bonds within the group. The group takes another opportunity to take a photo for Who Reads the Times. Little did we know that this would become the photo featured in the St. John Valley Times. Once we returned to shore at the end of our trip on the Katahdin, the group went to check in at the motel. Don Murray had carefully selected this motel since it was right on the shore of Moosehead Lake and provided a great view of the lake. This is the view of Moosehead Lake from inside the motel room. This is the same view of Moosehead Lake from the patio that each motel room had. The itinerary then brought the group to their first full meal of the tour at the Rod and Reel Cafe. The pleasant atmosphere of the cafe included decor of the area's fishing, hunting, and lumbering history. The Rod and Reel restaurant's menu offered many choices, from Allen's prime rib to Pat's scallop dinner. After the delicious meal, Don had organized a view of the sunset at Moosehead Lake. We then gathered at a scenic lookout called Blair Hill. There was much anticipation from the group about Don's planned view of the sunset. And the group was not disappointed. On cue, Mother Nature cooperated. The sun was starting to set. Even the Katahdin, the boat that we had been on earlier, can be seen gliding down Moosehead Lake on its last run of the day. As the setting sun got closer to the horizon, all eyes were on the spectacular marvel being revealed in front of us. Mother Nature had once again revealed its last but finest hour of the day. The group just stood in awe, admiring the beauty of the concluding moments of this wonderful day. It is now time to leave Blair Hill and return to the motel to discover 
The Magic of an Evening Campfire Although Don had brought the firewood, the responsibility of the fire rested with Larry. He took his job seriously and in a few minutes had a fire going that provided warmth, comfort, and the magical attraction of a campfire. It is now early morning on the second day of our Greenville tour. Today's itinerary begins with breakfast at Kelly's Landing's Restaurant, a short walk from the motel. Kelly Landing's Restaurant is located on the shores of the West Cove of Moosehead Lake, several miles from the center of Greenville. This area also includes its own historic sites. As the group walks towards the restaurant, a number of new Greenville sites are revealed. Many of the homes were built in the late 1800s, reflecting the lumbering and maritime history of the period. Notice the decorative woodwork on this house, showing the link to the forest industry. But also notice the porthole window under the eaves of the house, associating it to the maritime influence. The group walks by the headquarters of Plum Creek, the controversial land development company. This is the Everleth Craft Sheridan Historical House. We are scheduled to return here after breakfast. There are two major seaplane bases in Greenville, which provide air tours over the Moosehead Lake area. These two seaplane bases are central to Greenville's annual International Seaplane Fly-In Festival held in mid-September. Our walk takes us under the well-maintained railroad trestle, which crosses Wiggins Stream. As we walk over the Wiggins Stream Bridge, we get a glimpse of the West Cove Public Boat Launch Area. On the opposite side of the bridge is one of our guide's childhood play areas. In winter, local kids would clear off the snow, making a skating rink, and enjoying many evenings of ice skating. The group arrives at Kelly's Landings Restaurant. We are here to enjoy their famous morning buffet. The group is again not disappointed by the menu which includes something for everyone, from ham and eggs, French toast and home fries, to fruit and cottage cheese. The next stop on today's itinerary is the Everleth Craft Sheridan Historical House. This museum is the centerpiece of Greenville's history. Don had arranged to have the tours of the facilities given by three knowledgeable guides. A group photo is taken as the tour begins. The house was originally built in the early 1890s and was the home of one of Greenville's most prominent businesswomen, Julia Kraft. After her death, she gifted the home to the Greenville Historical Society. The house was gifted intact and retains all of the original family belongings. Here we see a spindle phonograph. This technology became obsolete with the introduction of vinyl records. One of our tour guides brought the group to the cellar of the house. Here we discovered 
that many of the wash sinks in the house were made from slate from a quarry in nearby Monson, Maine. As we toured the education section of the museum, Lucille, a former teacher from our senior college group, demonstrated her skills in this one-room classroom model. The tour included an area which had many photographs of the lumbering industry. Notice that the room's walls and woodwork make use of the forest products. One such photograph shows the piles of four-foot pulpwood that were about to be loaded onto railroad cars. Among the museum's pictorial treasures is a photo of Greenville's winning football team. On the far left of the photo, on the third row, is Coach Lowell Osgood. Ozzy, as he was known, later became coach at the University of Maine at Fort Kent, where he continued his winning tradition. And here is another photo showing Greenville's winning basketball team. Note the third person from the left in the first row. He would become a tour organizer. Way to go, Don! The last room to tour in the Everleth Craft Sheridan House is her sun porch. This was the last renovation on the house, and the woodwork reflects the more modern use of wood in homes. With the museum tour now over, the next item on our itinerary was to visit the Murray family camp lot on Moosehead Lake. This site is used as a family gathering place for the Murrays. All the conveniences of a campsite is offered, including tenting areas, picnic tables, a lakeside boat launch, and all sorts of gaming areas. The group toured the camp lot, especially the tent sites and picnic areas. Some of the group walked down to the lakeside dock to admire the majestic Moosehead Lake. It was now lunchtime and dawn had made reservations at one of Greenville's high-end caterers. In addition to catering banquets, the Shaw House provides special meals to private parties. The group was ushered to an outside patio dining room. The place was delightful and relaxing. Being the only party, there was no rush to eating. The group took advantage to enjoy each other's company. After an hour of socializing, the buffet meal was brought out. Each dish was a culinary delight. The group all agreed that this gourmet meal served in such a relaxing but formal setting was the trip's greatest surprise. After nearly three hours at the Shaw House, most of the group returned to the Murray family camp lot. However, others went to tour the nearby crash site of a B-52 bomber. In the meantime, teams were organizing to play beanbag horseshoe. Judy is preparing to pitch the beanbag. Larry and Don keep egging Judy to try to hit them with the beanbag. However, all enjoyed the time at the camp lot. But the last item on the Greenville tour agenda 
was to say goodbye to Greenville. The group had such a good time. We learned a lot. We ate a lot. We walked a lot. But more importantly, we all enjoyed each other's company. The key to having such a wonderful tour is to have a great guide. A special thank you goes out to Don Murray for not only organizing the tour, but for being such a wonderful and knowledgeable guide. A thank you also goes out to the St. John Valley Senior College for bringing classes and experiences such as the Greenville Tour to senior citizens. Anyone interested in becoming a member of Senior College or to register for classes should contact the Fort Kent SAD 27 Adult and Community Education Office at 834-3536. Additional information is also available online at www.sjvsc.org.